Hello everyone, my name is Audrey and we are in the last episode of this series, thank God. So thank you so much for watching <laughs> the video podcast and I hope you've learned something from it. So I asked some of my colleagues and friends to answer some of the questions to help aspiring physical therapy students. So this episode is kind of important for you to know because this school is quite unique in the sense that this is one of the only two schools in the country that offers a DPT degree. So let's welcome Mr. Angelo Paolo Kismundo from Southwestern University. So thank you so much, sir. I know you're very busy. Thank you so much as well. Thank you. Thank you, miss. Thank you for having <laughs> me here. And yeah, to all of you viewers out there, um, I hope you could learn something from this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Sir Angelo, um, would you like to introduce yourself even more and ultimately, how did you decide to go into physical therapy as the career you want to pursue? Okay, so again, my name is Angelo Paolo Quismundo and I, um, I studied in Southwestern University last 2014, graduated um, in bachelor's, uh, bachelor's of Science in Physical Therapy last 2019, and I also took the board exams on that year. So, yeah, um, <laughs> kind of uh, my, my journey is a bit straightforward with when it comes to PT. And of course, um, right before I decided to choose PT, I actually had two courses in mind. So one was fine arts and one was like a medical course. So um, I really wanted to pursue fine arts because I really love to draw and all of that. I really love to, <laughs> I really love art in general. But, but yes, yeah, I kind, of, uh, I kind of, oh really? Yes. Oh, that's good to know, medyo mga, we're somewhat, some, uh, we're some sort of, you know, frustrated artists. <laughs> Uh, outliers <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> we're not able to fulfill our dreams on uh, yeah <laughs> to pursue fine arts but yeah i kind of thought that you know uh, fine arts is somewhat of a hobby in the long run so um that's why i i proceeded to choose a medical course and i'm torn between um med tech as well as um physical therapy because uh, I heard a lot of good things as well about PT because my, one of my classmates uh, way back in high school, one of my classmates, her sister was actually working as a PT already and he kind of suggested that course to me as well. So yeah, I took, uh, I initially took the entrance examination in Velas. I, I really wanted to, per, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to pursue PT in Velas as well. And uh, uh, but it turns out the tuition was kind of um, not within our budget at that time. Yeah. So um, because of that, uh, I decided to go to Southwest because um, they also offered intern. Uh, they also offered a scholarship for me as well at, uh, in there because yeah, I, I was uh, you know I was in the honor roll, so I, we've kind of took yeah. that advantage. To have that kind of discount as well in southwestern so yeah that's it that's the story why where you know i i i've studied in southway and as well as i've been working in southwestern for uh, more than a year already sir angelo what are the three things that excite you about being a physical therapist so why do you love what you're doing right now so um first of all it's with uh, the autonomy itself so i'm you know i could like decide uh you got a lot of options after graduating pt as to what um job opportunities would like to take so uh, in my case i pursued um teaching because uh there's not uh unfortunately at that time um hiring for pts were not that available so that's why i i, I applied in school school <laughs> to give it a shot and apparently i was accepted so thank god for that and yeah, um, it's with the autonomy itself because um, as uh, as PTs, we're taught to be independent practitioners. So that's why um, uh, we're kind of at par actually with medicine students. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, with regards to the assessment, the way that we uh, that we uh, carry out our uh, management as well. So um, I, I really like that uh, freedom that we have as PTs. As well as, uh, secondly, it's more about um, bringing change 
two people's lives. So, yeah, I will never forget that time we're in. I was still an intern and one of my patients actually, I, I was in CBR at that time and one of my patients actually told me that uh, I hope you're... Uh, may na lang unta sir ikaw na lang ang akong PT so yes. yeah basically he's saying that um he wants me to be my PT during his uh, you know during that entire time and yeah unfortunately again I was still an intern so I, I was not that able to you know to yeah. provide that service at that time but it's really rewarding uh, as a fact that I was still an intern at that time uh, I, I didn't have my license yet It was really rewarding and that really gave me a push to do better as a PT and as well as to really ace the board exam and to work as a PT as well. So lastly, what made me fall in love with PT is that um, it's very, it's a very lucrative job and it's very in demand right now. So to um, a course that deals with handling people in socializing and at the same time, you know, bringing betterment to people's lives, bringing functionality and all of that, um, PT is a very perfect um, job for you. Okay. So actually, the reason why I sir, no, na I became a PT because I was a shifty. I was from Mentech. That's why. Um, mm, okay. I remembered ba, when you said na you wanted Mentech and PT. Um, the reason yeah. also why I shifted to PT was because of a cerebral palsy patient. I wasn't really enjoying medical technology, Mangyut, but then I kept passing man every semester. So for me, like, I wala rani, okay rani, ana. But then that kid, yun, that kid with cerebral palsy really made me shift yun, to PT. Yun. I was, I, yeah. I'm not brave enough to shift to PT, Sanj. Okay. Yeah, okay. sometimes it takes like a single person, you know, for you to be convinced to pursue with this course. And I owe it to him actually, to that patient that he really wanted me to be my PT and that really touched me and, you know, made me the <laughs> therapist that I am right now. The therapist you are right now, yes. Very true. So if you would pick another <laughs> field, Japan, sir, would you still want to become a PT or you would go for um, fine arts, the one that you said a while ago now, that was kind of your first choice also? Well, a part of me really wanted to pursue with fine arts still. Like, but it's a very, um, you know, it's very minimal. <laughs> Every oh. time, it, it It comes out whenever I, I I draw something like out of boredom, and I was like, "What if I pursued? If I were to repeat everything again, I would still choose PT." Okay. Anyway, sir, you can you you can be the next natter one side. You can draw the next anatomy atlas. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> could you hit me up with that job? Ah, <laughs> baka naman natter siya. <laughs> so why do you think um colleges fail to um inspire students to go into physical therapy school? Because I know that there are not a lot of pre medical students know that there is a doctorate of physical therapy route, right? Rather than the MD yeah. route. Yeah. Most of them go to medicine rather than going to DPT. Yeah. Um, well, with regards to PT itself, um, unfortunately, there's still, you know, it's kind of an obscured field still to some extent, and it's kind of unfortunate as well that not many people know what PT is. So, yeah, they just assume that PT is similar to massage therapy, uh, mm-hmm. but. You know, technically wise, we are much more, you know, our, our background is much more rooted with, you know, anatomy, physiology, with all of that. We have the proper training to do, or to carry out our management. So, yeah, there's still, uh, there's still something with regards to what PT is. But, yeah, with regards to the doctorate of PT, um, I only heard about it around when I was in third year third year mm-hmm. of you know of my course and i was like really there's a doctorate of pt and yeah and actually i'm that fortunate enough to um to be in a school wherein dpt has already been um offered this is a recent development it started around last year yeah mm-hmm. june of last year But uh, unfortunately, due to you know the pandemic and the current circumstances, so uh, wala pa enrollees <laughs> currently. But we are um, hoping that you know to those PTs who really want to pursue DPT, um, they could pursue it here in Southwestern University. And of course, um, uh, that DPT program as well, we we're. We were partnered with Utica College. Yeah, uh, you may stu- you'll, you'll study DPT in Southwestern, but the diploma that you are getting will be from Utica College. 
So, uh-huh. yeah, um, you know, you don't need to go um, outside of the country to take for to get your DPT. You could already study here in South Western University for that. Um, can you tell us a brief background of uh, the course and a little background about the DPT program there in Southwestern University? Yeah, with regards to where our school is located, so we're located in Orhelio Street, Cebu City. So the biggest advantage with regards to our location is that uh, the surrounding area within the school is somewhat of a youth town. So get a lot of boarding houses, um, dormitories, Um, very student-friendly places as well as you got a lot of food. food. Yes. <laughs> a lot downside to it is that our school is, you know, it's kind of um, hidden. Oh. Yeah, hidden. <laughs> hidden. Yeah. I still got those questions. Na, asa, asa tapit ang Southway? <laughs> asa kung sakyun pa dong Southway? I still got those questions yun, because of how, you know, um, hidden it is. That's the downside lang yun. But yeah, um, again, the benefits outweigh the uh, you know the disadvantages as well so um in okay so in southwestern university we got the rehabilitative sciences college a uh, college of rehabilitative sciences so uh, basically um, under that um, one big um, course we got pts also physical therapy we also got occupational therapy and uh It's just a recent offering. We got another sibling to that, <laughs> to our um, one big college. We got sports science rehabilitation for that kind of person who's really sporty and you really want to work for athletes. And uh, yeah, it's uh, you go, you should you know pursue yeah. sports science rehabilitation. So yeah, <laughs> and with regards to the doctorate program, as of last year, we are partnered with Utica College in New York. Um, basically, what happens is that um, the diploma that you're getting will be from Utica College. So Southwestern will be the one who will, you know, process all of your uh, transcript, uh, transcript of records, and actually, no, uh, TOEFL is uh, TOEFL is just an optional uh, yeah. uh, creden- uh, document or credential. Yes. Anyway, so, the standard of yeah. teaching is English, so I don't think you will need a TOEFL. But... With regards to the um, course here in in Southwestern University so um, initially we um, it's about uh, before at that at my time it's about five years but yeah due to the recent K-12 development so uh, that five years became four years and Uh, of course, uh, usually around in first year and second years, we still got ma- uh, minor subjects, but around third year and fourth year, it's mainly uh, major subjects already. And our internship is already, uh, it starts as early as second year, our internship. So oh, okay. uh, what we are practicing right now is actually um, a thematic curriculum, wherein um, each semester we focus on one um aspect of rehabilitation so for example during um Gee, yeah. usually uh, yeah um around first years it's more of the basics about um, anatomy mm-hmm. physiology kinesiology you got the whole year for that but around um second year first semester it already starts there like um in second during second year first semester um students will focus more on a logical rehabilitation so um with that um you know within a semester we got five months so around uh, three months of classroom uh, the- uh, based uh, of um, establishing the theoretical aspect first or uh, for three months and the last six weeks of that semester will be um, internship already so um, as early as um, possible the students are already exposed to um, the rehab setup already and they could actually apply um, whatever they learned in the classroom to the uh, clinical setup already. Oh, so um, nice. aside from that yeah it's somewhat uh, it's it's already been shifting uh, the <laughs> the course itself it's somewhat shifting and um, of course um, at that time as well before um, we were the first batch actually to have uh, the problem based setup oh, to okay. uh, to have the problem based setup so 
um, basically with problem-based setup, we were given a case good for that week, and our subjects are already be, uh, our subjects are divided into uh, they are bundled up together and they are divided all throughout the week. So for Mondays, we focus. Uh, we are given the case. Let's just say it's all about stroke. And for Mondays, we focus more on uh, the basic medical sciences. So that includes the anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, all of basics for that. Um, for then fall around Tuesdays, the next day we focus on the pathophysiology. So um, yeah, about the inside, uh, about the processes involved with, with that disease, and then. Um, Around Wednesdays, we focus on assessment already. So, what are the particular physical therapy assessments for that uh, case? Uh, and then, um, of course, we also do practicals as well. Usually, we spend the afternoon uh, mastering those uh, skills. And then, around Thursdays, the management aspect. So, the Thera X part already. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are the appropriate um, exercises and management for that? Um, case as well as the electrotherapy aspect as well so um is this uh, case uh, is es electrical simulation applicable to that case or hmp we also discuss that on thursdays and again in the afternoon we still uh, we also master our skills in that as fridays um actually there's been a change because before at that time uh uh, our time, usually in Fridays, we got clinics, so we are already exposed as well on that week, um, on that uh, given case. For example, again, with stroke, we find stroke patients on a Friday and we carry out um, everything from the assessment down to the intervention part. But um, recently as well, there has been a shift because since uh, internship will be uh, integrated later on for the semester, uh, Fridays we use that day for you know mastery of skills as well. So one on one and as well as um, uh, teaching as well. So for example, if there are kind of diff if there are difficult topics, um, there would be one on one coaching as well for that um, topic. So wow, it's more okay. it's more like that. Yeah, it's uh, it it uh, makes a lot of sense right now actually. So Mondays for anatomy, physiology, kinesiology. Tuesdays for pathophy. Uh, Wednesdays for assessment. Fr Thursdays for intervention and Fridays for a mastery of skills. Ah okay. I like your setup actually. Thank you. <laughs> no, I like it because it's yeah. like, you know, like real to life setting it, but it's actually like um the school that I'm in right now that somehow and then at first you won't understand why Mangodna, why is the curriculum structured like that? But if you're someone who's who was a clinician yeah. way back ba, like for example PT and then that's actually like real life ba. So, so supposed to be your thought process is you know, just like that kind of um problem-based learning it shouldn't be like you know like kanang watak watak gani or separate mm. subjects and then you will be the one mixing it later on during the grand yeah. valida yeah it should be like the the curriculum is really good kay kanang at first kay dili na gani ka makurat during grand revalida also Okay, na naman tanan. It's all structured. It's all yeah. outlined for you. Kind of follows a natural progression as to how we learn as PTs. So, yes. of course, we start first with the basics and then you know, complex topics already that we use in assessment, intervention. So, yeah, it, it was really a fortunate time for me to study there in Southwestern already where I could really appreciate, um, you know, PT as a whole. And yes, with regards to our entrance examinations, uh, we actually pra practice open enrollment. So we don't have um, entrance examinations aside from the uh, standard IQ and EQ. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's around 40 to 60K. So yeah, uh, it's typically around the 60K mark whenever you know, you're know you already in second year and you got um, the internship already. But yeah, um, so far, so good. Yes. Internship <laughs> and, is supposed to be pricey, Mang Yun. Okay, you're handling yeah, a patient, man. Yeah. It's really pricey. And uh, at least, um, you know, since we are practicing that uh, last six weeks, we practice internship already. It's, kind of, it's not really that financially heavy already. Because I, I still remember at that time, when I, was, uh, whenever, uh, when I was in fifth year, our tuition fee went like around 100K. 100, yeah, uh... For the whole year. 
So, be- yeah, and because of this setup as well, it's kind of staggered already. So, yeah, it's um, very nice. You know, oh. um, the, the parents are given, you know, a breathing room <laughs> every semester. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one of um one of the upsides as well in Southwestern. And what well, uh the only downside I guess with regards to this uh, curriculum is is that um it, it's more of a problem the, uh, it's more of a problem in the second years because they still have minors to attend to. So uh chances are sometimes they end up uh, around 7 p.m. 8 p.m. Oh, already okay. in school yeah. because they they still have to take especially uh uh, I won't forget that time we're in. I, I was able to handle second year interns already, and yeah, um, their internship starts at around eight, and then it ends up around five. So, okay, so that's they still have to attend really other class. classes right after that. So, uh, I guess yeah. that's one of the downsides. Yeah. Okay, so how do you um enroll for a DPT degree in Southwestern? Like we we will be passing all the requirements to Southwestern, or we will pass our requirements to Utica College na under it. So uh, Southwestern will be the one who will process the requirements itself, then we are going to submit it for endorsement to Utica. So, what are the rotations during your internship and the types of um, rehab settings you were exposed to? So, yeah, um, it, it kind of um, reflects uh, what we have already in our curriculum. So, uh, aside from neurological re- rehabilitation, we also have a rehabilitation, cardiopulmonary, um, uh, miscellaneous cases such as um, integumentary disorders, um, metabolic disorders, uh, endocrine disorders as well. We also got um, community-based rehabilitation as well as um, school-based rehabilitation and uh, sports um uh, sports-based na rehabilitation. So, um, we have the centers we got in Southwestern, we have SOTO, uh, Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center, and basically, uh, SOTO is like the hodgepodge of it all. Yes, <laughs> all of the true. cases, you, you are going to encounter everything there. Um, yes. We also got Gasa Sagugma for geriatric rehabilitation. Yeah, I, I, I forgot to mention geriatric rehabilitation as well as pediatric rehabilitation. In Gasa Sagugma, we have geriatric rehabilitation. Our school-based rehabilitation is actually Lourdes. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a school in Labangon. Um, we also got Perpetua Socor. Bo- uh, it's both, um, again, it's kind of a hodgepodge as well. Yeah, yes. RSI rehab solutions. Yes. We also got Chongwa um, as well. We all, uh, Chongwa Fuente. More of orthopedics, and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we also got uh, for our community-based rehabilitation, we got Argao. So we have we have the rural health unit in there. So that's our community-based rehabilitation, good for two months. <laughs> uh, city gym as well uh, city mm-hmm. gym as well as um, in Southwestern, we also got our own gym as well in there for our sports-based uh, rehabilitation. Um, we also got we also got um, stack in Lapu Lapu for okay. pediatric rehabilitation. Oh yeah, that's where and, I met some of my friends too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was assigned in centers wherein I could meet a lot of people from other colleges. So, yeah. <laughs> and BCMC, Visayan, Visayan uh, Community, Community Medical Center. Community, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Jones. Um, as well as we also got our own rehab clinic. <laughs> Last but not in the least, we also US. got our own rehab clinic in Southwestern, Southwestern University. Again, it's kind of here, based lang here. Ah, okay. Ah. Yes. Based lang here. So there are no um, offshore or international connections where you can shadow a PT outside? Well, uh, we're hoping to have, you know, um, offshore, but currently we don't have one. But Hopefully, in the future, that would be offered. Yes. <laughs> baka naman. <laughs> Southwestern. <laughs> yeah. Baka naman. Please. PM. PM sent. <laughs> <laughs> PM sent. Okay. So, if you were to proceed to medical school, um, what do you think are the most useful subjects coming from an academician? Ah, that one. Um, anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, um, assessment as well. Those are our Very bread true. and butter as PTs. So, uh, I actually had a friend way back in high school who like contacted me last 
while, while I'm working there in Southwestern already, he contacted me and he was like, he's asking for help with regards to anatomy. I studied med tech um, oh, in yeah. CDU. So, yeah, um, again, he kind of have a difficulty in figuring out the anatomy and physiology portion. So, yeah, I, I guess that's the edge. We got as PTs. And yeah, considering that um, in Sauta, way back in Sauta as well, I was able to, you know, meet uh, medical interns as well. Because in the rehab there, we also got uh, medical interns. So they were like kind of, kind of, you know, encouraging us to pursue medicine because of our knowledge on anatomy, physiology, and all of that assessment as well. Um, yeah, assessment is practically very useful very as important. well. Very you know, important. Yes. Very important because. Um, you know, unlike other courses, like um, they don't really deal with you know handling patients, patient handling, interviewing. Uh, they might find it difficult to interview patients, so that's why um, yeah, that's the biggest advantage we got as PTs because again, we treat really in person, we treat the person as a whole, so we are able to you know discover their. Um, you know their wants their needs as well as their fears and all of that so yeah that's yeah, the biggest yeah. thing that um, we should bring to medical school um what are the career opportunities or academic tracks for example if these students will not proceed to medical school so um you could really work as a pt um yeah it was kind of funny because actually when i, when I graduated pt I had five things in mind actually as to where would I work. So first of all, I was like, I really want to work as a PT in a public hospital. But unfortunately, at that time, <laughs> there were no available hirings, yeah. no posting. So, okay, I'll try with private hospitals. I'll try working as a PT in a private hospital. <laughs> Again, no job posting at all. So, okay, crush that out. Third, I was like, maybe I should try, you know, working as a gym instructor or like yeah. fitness instructor. <laughs> and yeah, unfortunately, I, I kind of like I had doubts with my, <laughs> you know, fitness skills. So yeah, yeah I, I, I pursued teaching. <laughs> Eventually, I pursued teaching. We could, um, you know, as PTs as well as uh, some of my colleagues as well, pros- um, uh, pursued uh, medical records processing. So oh yes. Yeah. Oh. Most of my colleagues actually pro- uh, proceed to medical processing. So, yeah, um, there are a lot of job opportunities as PTs. But it's really, what's really, uh, you could also work as a home PT as well. Yes. So it's... that's like the biggest upside. So yes. could like advertise yourself, <laughs> you know, post like a job, <laughs> you know, post like about your qualifications, and one way or another, people will call you even by word of mouth. So, yeah, that's, that's very really. Cool. That's the biggest thing we got as PTs as well. We are very versatile as to um, what you know um, job fields that we land in. Yes, that's very true. For private hospitals, Mungud, it's kind of hard for you to land on a job. You have to be a volunteer first. Or for example, if you want to apply as a public um, clinician, like PT clinician in a public hospital, then I think from what I can remember, you need to have, I think, one year experience for you to stand out apart from the rest. So it's kind yeah. of kind of hard. Yeah. 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 And uh, hopefully that uh, hopefully that is something that we need to change. Again, um, it's really unfortunate that PTs, uh, whenever you heard the word physical therapy, it's something that is associated immediately as to working abroad. So, yeah. of course, uh, you know, it's kind of unfortunate that um, those kinds of setups really um, encourage the brain drain. So, yeah, hopefully um, that that is something that will be changed later on. Yes, very true. Okay, so last question, Sir Angelo. What type of advice would you um, like to give to aspiring physical therapy students? So, um when I first started in PT, uh, the only advice that I could really give to aspiring PT students is that um, you should, you know, take your time in reading what PT is all about and try to reach out to PTs as well. So, as, uh, I'm kind of kind of fortunate as well to have this. Um, I had this schoolmate before he was a lower year, and he. Uh, 
and when he proceeded to senior high school and then following um, you know uh, college he asked me about what PT is so yeah uh, of course um you know uh, actually with all courses you know it's not without a doubt that it's you're, you'll be encountering some difficulties along the way but um, you know um, just keep pushing as well as um, everything is worth it in the end you might you know look uh, you might reach to that point wherein you look back and you kind of wondered how come i you know i cried over this subject yes <laughs> <laughs> how come you know i failed over this subject yeah so yeah it's all it's all about the perspective guys you'll you'll learn to love the course along yes. the way and there would be people who will be inspired in you to really um push through take the board exams and then do do you as a pt <laughs> That's very true. Like even even now in medicine, no, like for example, um, I actually went to read again Sullivan, and then I realized, no, oh, this is not that. Um, it's not that challenging yeah. as it was on my first pass, ba. So you will realize now as years goes on, gani, if your um if your clinical skills are already um better or it's improved na, and you will realize na ano mihila pong kwa ni sa una. Yeah. Again, it's it's a matter of perspective, Jude. It's difficult right now, but you know it will get there as you go along the way. Yeah. Then yeah, it's kind of funny how I, I even cried over my minor subjects, <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, but yeah, looking back at it, it's kind of a funny memory already. So yeah, just keep pushing and don't ever give up. Okay, Sigi, sir. Thank you so much for your time, sir Angela. I know you're very busy thank you so much these past well. few weeks. Yeah, but you then too, you're you inserted, too. you know, like an an ample of your time lang to help future PTs listening out there. <laughs> thank you so much as well. And yeah, you 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 too. You know, as a medical student, you're also busy right now. Panel as well. It's it's a bit difficult. So yeah, yeah thank you for doing this as well. And just keep pushing as well <laughs> <laughs> and but